Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zach. You must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. Rich and young, a perfect combination, huh? Well, let's help York get some. Agent York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. But tell me, Usha, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was the sole reason for living after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Uh, but don't go too hard on her, okay? I, I just, I just devolved her into, uh, her dancing in circles with the, the dress of her dead daughter. Uh, that's probably healthy. Probably fine. Hey, Polly made her all the way out here. Speaking of probably healthy. Oh, you got to get that back checked out. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested, but I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Zack, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zack. Amazing. I get a kick out of the fact that he's still yelling at her from across the room. Like, even when they're next to each other, he, he's just taken- he's just taken to yelling at her when they communicate, because that's how they communicate now. I have double-checked, and, uh, Deadly Permission was created by Access Games, which is a Japanese developer. Uh, this is actually relatively earlier in their career. They did Spy Fiction, Ace Combat, Sengoku Basara, 
Battle Heroes, and then Deadly Permission in 2010. Then they went on to make more Ace Combat and Sengoku Basada games, and eventually the director's cut in 2013. What? Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition in 2015 was them? But they mostly make a lot of- they make a lot of uh, Ace Combat and Sengoku Basara games over and over again. That's just what their- their timeline's been. No luck on go I, I, I was getting Google happy during that particular conversation. I was trying to find out if this was originally in English or Japanese. Cause, uh, there's examples like Final Fantasy- uh, sorry, Resident Evil 7 was written and voiced in English first. Which it seemed odd, but that's how they went. But I couldn't verify. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. Just rumors about his scar are enough reason that he shouldn't be in this town? George got a mega scar. Hello again, Agent York. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good today. Well, that's good to hear. Do you have any information that could help me out? Information? Sounds difficult and not my kind of conversation. Anyways, you should come by the gas stand again. I'll give you the best service in town. Zack, perhaps you can tell me. Why did she bother coming here? She doesn't even button her pants. Hey, Jim. Is this the material world? <laughs> is she a material girl? I'm nothing to say to you. I haven't asked you anything yet, Jack. Shut it! I might open up. If you introduce me to, I don't know, a Ben Franklin or two. <laughs> oh, what a creature. Guess there's always someone like him in every town. He's just seen that one movie, that one scene in some movies where some guy on the street gets bribed by an officer and he's just, every time I talk to him, he's just fishing for that to happen. Are you okay? What are you holding? Wait, oh, she has one shoe. Um... Do you need help? Are you supposed to be under supervision? Uh... Are you doing the potty dance? What is this? Oh my! My pot is getting cold. The pot lady. Hey, mister! My pot is getting cold! You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney! Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zach, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. I mean, she's up there. Graveyard guy is still pretty, pretty strong contender, I would say. Oh, it's Keith and Lily. There you guys are. Hey, York! You were rocking it large up there! Was I? I haven't been on stage like that since elementary school. You made me think, man, like, things can't go on like this. We need, like, some action or something. I was Cha. pretty psyched up, you know, before you got on stage. I was like, dude, a real psycho in town. Pretty sweet gig. But now, I mean, dude, that lunatic could be any one of us, man. 
I don't want to think of that whack job coming after my family. Makes me shudder all over, man. It was way too heavy. You'll catch him, right, FBI? Of course. But you need to be able to take care of those you love, too. You're right, man. Right on the level. I need to do what's right for my family, man. You lit my soul, man. Thanks, FBI. I think Keith currently accounts for like 50% of the world's uses of the phrase in history of thanks, FBI. Hey, Lily. Agent York, your speech frightened some of us a little. You should work on being more sensitive with words when talking to groups. Really? I tried my best to be gentle. So, have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Hmm... Just Becky, really. She works part-time at the store. She's been acting strange recently. Strange? How? I took the boys along to visit her house today. I was just worried, you know, because she hasn't come into work at all after that incident. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Agent York, you frightened us a little. Yeah, I was talking about a killer and warning you guys to stay away so that you don't get killed. I guess I should have done this sooner. Uh, I don't know, I was, I was, just re I was realizing, oh shit. I, I, I was playing through the game and waiting for the side quest to open up and then realized in a panic they'd already opened up and had been open for several, ch several chapters already and I was already six chapters into the game. I'm like, oh no. Uh, so I kind of panicked and tried to get them done. But uh, this whole thing is uh, is actually a lot of people telling me to go do side quests so if i did literally just done the next story beat i would have it would have been the story the the order of events for me would have made a little more sense aha i can meet you here i'm u.s special agent francis york morgan i presume you are the owner of the diner that anna worked at that's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. Your husband's a real asshole. Can you tell me if you noticed anything strange about Anna before the incident? Well, I'm not sure if this will be of any help, but... Anything, no matter how small, could be of help. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained and came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. Criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. Why can I change my guns out here? a really strange looking out of animation. Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. <laughs> Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. Here's what I've got. Is it like a t tutorial moment, or what?
I don't, I do not, I don't need to buy a, a, I have an infinite ammo gun. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. He Even sells today, lollipops. a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. <laughs> the shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. Okay, the homoeroticism's on purpose, right? Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. It, it has to be on purpose. You can't do that on accident. Back in the hole. Okay, there's... There's just a lot going on. <laughs> He's still snapping. He's just the MVP of this game, apparently. <laughs> there we go. So it must be chapter seven now, I guess is how this goes. Yeah, the total clear time went up a lot at that point. I <laughs> so the guy has like snakeskin pants. He has an idle and everyone always has an idle animation where they're kind of wobbling, which is always weird looking, but he's like leaning on a wall, so he was doing like weird pelvic thrusts on the wall because they want to have him not stand completely still, but it just looks absurd. Yeah, then he has a uh, the one earring and he calls him he calls himself the gunsmith and he works at Panda Bear. And you look at his gun suit and he sells lollipops, and then fucking York's like, I'd like to have you look at my gun sometime. I'm like, what are these lines? <laughs> They have to at least kind of know. Because, uh... This game does consistently show some signs of self-awareness along the way. Like, they have to- they have to know what they're doing here. This is bizarre. Now we're gonna go have dinner. Hooray! Is the gunsmith coming? <laughs> With his lollipops? I went a little fast, so maybe I didn't see that correctly. I could have sworn that he had an SMG and, like, I think it was a cigarette, some ammo for the SMG, and lollipops, I think. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, and let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then. Let's do that. Uh, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course we should eat the diner. It's the location that the murder victim worked at. Also, if, when he was talking about going home, and they were like, yeah, okay, go home. I was like, don't fucking tease me with dinner, and then just, and then just have him go home to the hotel. I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life, to eat from or as a urine cup. Huh. He hated women. 
that was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum, then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls, well, that is one thing. But... but those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> uh, not sanitary? Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. It sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course, but still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me, neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. They're the ones apologizing? It's a real weird argument to make, Jor Jorgen. This is your name now, apparently. Uh, there's no difference between crimes. Shoplifting versus apparently what you were about to talk about, which is the rape of 800 people? They're pretty different crimes. You can't even talk about the vic- you're even based on your victim versus criminal thing. That's 800 victims for one crime. I guess you could say that's 800 crimes? That might be your logic? Oh, it's- oh. Oh. This is a trap, isn't it? I think they've intentionally trapped me a little bit. I gotta go home. I gotta- I gotta get home. Uh, are you pointing me at the diner? Okay, cool. Uh, this is not good. It's raining, and it's almost midnight. Those are both bad things. Those are both pretty bad. That's Fiona's house. Olivia's at Nick's house. Carol and Thomas are at the Galaxy of Terror. I can make a quick trip over there to take a look. I haven't been there yet. We gotta go, we gotta go though. We don't want to be here when it hits when it hits midnight. And we don't want to be out at when it's raining usually either. How did dinner wait, the meeting ended at I have a clock. How did we end up having dinner until 10.30? So it's five and a half hours of these characters tolerating each other. I didn't think they were capable of that. Did I miss it? 
Oh, it's the turn. My bad. Gotta turn those headlights on. Zach, we can take a rest if you're tired. We can take a rest if I'm tired. Don't tell me what to do. The Galaxy of Terror is open for once. Oh, there's a trading card. I'm seeing her talking about how I need to hurry, and then I'm wandering into a neighboring building. I will say the clock moves super slowly in this game. So there's not that much risk usually. It's going to take a long time for that hour and a half to go by. I, I in particular realized that... So I've mostly been skipping time, but I mostly I definitely realized that when I showed up like uh, 40 minutes early to that meeting just now and I was like, ah, I wonder how fast it'll become time because like in a uh, in deadly pro uh, in uh, in pathologic that time would take like four minutes But in this game it was taking like a minute for the time to move by a minute practically probably wasn't that slow It's probably not one-to-one, -one, but it was definitely time was moving incredibly slowly. Oh Thomas is here. Wait, you moonlight at the bar? How much do you- you, you work like crazy. Thomas? <laughs> Weren't you just a mess a second ago? How much did you drink already? Hello. Thomas, you work as a bartender at night? Yes, well... It's my sister's bar, but she can't do everything by herself. How's business? Not great, after, well, you know. But people are bouncing back. They're carrying on with their lives, slowly but surely. But I'm still finding it hard to work at the sheriff's. I feel so sad. Everyone deals with their grief differently, that's all. Don't worry about it too much. What? Well, since I'm here now, anyway, how about making a cocktail for me? Of... of course. I'll make something extra special for you, Agent York. Try and forget work for a while and take it easy. I don't know which one of us was talking, honestly. I don't really need food. The Exorcist? The Martini... I mean, how, him being a horror movie buff, he's gonna have to get the Exorcist. It'll keep me from getting sleepy for a long time. What? Okay. Wow. Yeah. That really gets rid of your sleep meter. Not really relevant because I'm going to go to sleep to skip through the night, but sure. Hello. Would you like something to drink? No! No, it did that thing where the joystick snaps back. Something on your mind? Actually, Agent York, something has been bothering me recently. Bothering you? How? Well, there's this customer who always gives Carol trouble. Is it affecting business? He probably doesn't mean to, but, well, yes, to answer your question. You're an officer of the law. Why don't you just arrest him? Well, you see, he's not exactly breaking the law. No violence. He hasn't physically attacked her or anything. I understand, Thomas. If it's bothering you, then I'll take care of it. What? Aren't you busy with the investigation, Agent York? That won't be a problem. So tell me about this unwanted customer. Well, he isn't here right now. He usually comes in after 2100. I'll take a look in from time to time. He usually comes in after 2100? It's after 2100, Thomas. <laughs> Oops, I accidentally opened the menu. Oh yeah, just became available just now. Which one of you is it? Hey, Carol. <sighs> Carol, where did you learn to act? Act? What are you talking about? There's no need to hide it. That expression and that thing you do with your eyes. You're an actress, right? What are you on? 
You took too much of it anyway. Cut that crap out. Zack. I was only expressing my opinion. She reminds me of that show we saw in Chicago. I don't know anything about acting. Now leave me alone. Oh. Yeah, the trick apparently is that if it's, if talk is yellow, there's dialogue, and if there's and if it's white, then there's not. So it was still yellow, but it was just the follow-up line about the previous encounter. Where's the pain in the ass guy that shows up after 2100? Maybe I have to come back like tomorrow or something? Hello. My sister's performances are very popular around here. She hasn't recorded any of the songs, but she wrote all of them by herself. Where's the trouble guy? Now I'm curious. Is he you? The folks here sure drink a lot. She might be the main reason they come here though. Nope. Maybe I have to come back tomorrow. Or maybe after, maybe after 2100 is a briefer period that I'm thinking and it's already over. Could be. Let's save.